You don't have a watch, so I'll sing it. Good afternoon, and welcome to St. Jude the Apostle Parish as we celebrate Pentecost Sunday. Again, we welcome Father Zach Weber, who will be our presider today. On this day, we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit into our world. Three months ago, we began our journey from Lent to Easter, from winter to spring, from darkness to light, from death to to new life. The arrival of the Holy Spirit blesses us and we live our lives in the risen Lord. Please join in singing our opening hymn, Creator Spirit by Whose Aid, number 196 in the Breaking Bread book, that is number 196. Please rise. Creator Spirit, by whose aid the world's foundations first were laid, Alleluia, Alleluia, give us thy land that we may see. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you sent the Holy Spirit to be our advocate and guide. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you sent the Holy Spirit to bring peace to a world marred by sin. Christ, have mercy. 
Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you sent the Holy Spirit to guide us to eternal life with you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand, the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast, sanctify your whole church in every people and nation. Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth. And with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Today's readings can be found in the front part of your Breaking Bread books, number 165, that is page 165. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together, and suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, 
Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. And yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh Lord my God, you are great indeed. Manifold are your works, O Lord. The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. If you take away their breath, they perish and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit, and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever, and may the Lord be glad in his works. Pleasing to him be my theme. I will be glad in the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. The sequence for Pentecost is number 195, Come, O Holy Spirit, that's number 195. Come, Holy Spirit, come, and from your celestial home shed a ray of light divine, come, O Spirit, come, come, O oh Father of the poor, come, O oh source of all our store, come within our bosom shine, come, O oh Holy Spirit, come. You of comforters are best, you the soul's most well. Come, Holy Spirit, come in 
is in the midst of woe. Come, O Holy Spirit, come. O most blessed light divine, may that light within us shine, and our inmost being fill. Come, O Holy Spirit, come. In your absence we have not Nothing good in deed or thought, nothing free from taint of ill. Come, O oh, Holy Spirit, come. Hallelujah. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We gather on Pentecost Sunday as a reminder for us that we need to have something change in our lives. There's, a, there's an invitation for renewal today and also the rest of your life. So it's not just a one and done thing. The, Pope, the three past popes have been calling for us to have what we call a new evangelization, which means there needs to be a renewal, like we saw in the first reading today, of how to present the gospel to other people. Because I don't know if you're like me, but when I grew up, Every time I go to church, I would just fall asleep because I was incredibly boring. It just felt like the priest had no life in him, and I was kind of like, come on, man, like, what's going on? And one priest, just, it seemed like every other word was mm K, and he was very monotone, and I was like, why do I, like, what's, why am I here? You know, I, I have a masculine heart, right? So it's different than the feminine heart, but like, I, I, I had no desire to change. And we're all here because hopefully we know that something needs a change in our lives. And I can remember, remember when, you know, we talk about this, this new evangelization needing to happen. It, first of all, for me, it had to happen through a new Pentecost. Because when I met someone for the first time in my life who I felt was on fire with the Holy Spirit, things began to change. He was a priest and he had something I'd never seen before. He actually had brown hair. Never knew you could be young and be a priest. Just never knew that. But when he talked to me, now this is a little bit of my background. I, I'm, a, I'm an athlete. Like I played baseball, basketball, football, and track, and I played baseball in college and a few years of, of, of just, you know, local baseball as, a, as a, a young adult. 
When he spoke, he spoke like a coach. And he spoke with fire and passion and humor. And he began to kind of say what the world's offering, you know, just what it means to be a man, you know, womanizing, cars, alcohol, clothes, all this stuff. And he just showed how empty it all was. And in my masculine heart, I knew what he was speaking was the truth. And what he was doing is he was flipping the, the, the world's image of, of what it means to be a man and flipping it right side up and showing me Jesus on the cross. To lay your life down for others. And then he began to go through today's gospel reading of why you need to go to confession. It's very simple. John 20, if you don't know it and you don't know why you need to go to confession, if you don't think you need to go to confession, you probably need to go to confession. But John 20, Jesus is just risen. The disciples are in the upper room because they're afraid because they just saw him be brutally murdered. And he walks through those locked doors, which is a symbol sometimes for your fear and my fear. First thing he does, he, is, it, well, first thing he doesn't do, is he doesn't say, why'd you abandon me? I love you. I gave my life for you. But no, the first thing he says, just in re revealing to them the importance of the Holy Spirit, he says, peace be with you. But then he showed them his wounds. He's not ashamed of his wounds. And then he says, peace be with you again. And then he breathed the Holy Spirit upon the apostles, our first bishops. And it says that he, he gave them the authority to forgive sins. He said, those who, he said, receive the Holy Spirit. Those whose sins you forgive are forgiven them. And those whose sins you are retained are retained. I don't know how much more clear it could be. And as, as, as I realized what it meant to be a man versus from the world to what it meant to be a man of God, I knew I needed to go to confession. And that was the important part was that the Holy Spirit working in, in my life was the need for repentance. And then I saw something I'd never seen before too. I, I, I heard the witness of a, of a priest that same day when I saw that other priest who had brown hair. Now I see here the witness of a priest who was clinically dead for three hours and came back to life. I'm hearing these stories that are full of the Holy Spirit. And they're getting time for Mass. As much as we need, a, we need a new evangelization and we need a new Pentecost, we're also in the time of a Eucharistic revival. Now, I, I'm probably like a lot of you growing up. I didn't call going to Mass Mass. I call it, I went to church. Well, you can go to church any time, but Mass is special. We're in the time of a Eucharistic revival because a lot of us, we don't believe what Catholics believe. Pew research studies have said for the past 20 years, a lot of Catholics don't believe what Catholics claim to believe. We claim to believe that at every single Mass, that on that altar, the bread is literally transformed into the body and blood of Jesus. The wine is transformed. Pew research studies say for a lot of us, and including me when I, when I heard these two guys speak and went to Mass, I didn't believe that. Pew Research Studies say that only 30% of Catholics that go to Mass believe. That means 70% of you have no idea what I'm talking about. This is why we're Catholic. The Eucharist is why we're Catholic. And when I went to that, that after hearing those two priests speak, when I went to Mass that day, like I just got filled with the Holy Spirit and somehow realized that it was really Jesus. When the priest called down the Holy Spirit upon the bread and the wine, I realized it was really him, and, and all I could feel radiating from that host, which I thought was just a symbol my whole life, but now I know it's Jesus, all I could feel was this, the most pure form of love. And just every hard part of my heart, all those walls of guilt and of shame, he just shattered them. For the first time that day, I heard God speak to me. And he said, this is the purpose of life, looking at the Eucharist, and you are called to be a priest. It scared me because I didn't know the Father. I was really afraid of what a lot of us are afraid of in this church is it's the opinion of others. What the Holy Spirit does is reveals the truth. When Jesus is talking about giving us the Holy Spirit and knowing that we need the Holy Spirit is it reveals the truth. And if you and I knew, if we could just experience the Father, and we started living from the Father, not for the Father, not trying to earn God's love, 
we would not have to worry about what other people think about us, right? And in, in my time in seminary, as I finally got over myself and applied to seminary, my time in seminary, it was like spiritual chemotherapy for my soul. Because the world's full of distractions, it's full of sin, and it's lacking the Holy Spirit. Sometimes, one of the, sometimes we, we have to really be honest of like asking, I just want you to ask yourself, like, when you think of God the Father, like, what comes to mind for you? Because Jesus, on the, Jesus what he was doing on the, on, the, on the cross, is he's revealing how much suffering he's willing to go through to prove the love of the Father. And the love between the Father and the Son is the Holy Spirit. And if we know who we are in the Father's eyes and we receive that identity more fully when you receive the Holy Spirit at your baptism, what did the Father say over you when you were baptized? For all the women in here, the Father said, you are my beloved daughter in whom I delight. For all the gentlemen in here, when you were baptized, the Father spoke over you when the Holy Spirit filled you. This is my beloved Son in whom I delight. And if we just knew how much the Father delights in us, it's like being in the Holy Spirit. We would want nothing to come in between that. We would want nothing to come in between that. And it's hard because a lot of us were perfectionists. I got to be perfect in order to love God. But the thing is, today, the truth is, God already is perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be loved by Him. And when we receive the Holy Spirit more fully, things begin to change. The transformation happens. The way you see yourself, the way you see God, the way you see others, everything changes. Everything. And, if, and it, it could be that I could be going to church for five years or ten years, or even 40, 50, 60 years. I, I don't know God. I didn't know that it was actually really Jesus on this altar. I didn't even know I need to be in a state of grace. I can't have any major sins on my soul before I receive. I didn't know that I, I need to go to confession if I've been missing Mass. And that's where a lot of the renewal is supposed to happen in this time of Eucharistic revival is in the confessional where the Holy Spirit fills you. Your sins are wiped away. And the Father loves forgiving his children. And he loves feeding them with his Son's body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Holy Eucharist. And he wants to give us a new Pentecost. Because in the Acts of the Apostles, they, they were trying to proclaim the power of God, the works of God, but the language wasn't happening. It was, a lot of it was like, me when I was a child, okay, boring. Like, we need some fire. That's one of the symbols of the Holy Spirit. But for some of us, like, if you think of the word Eucharistic revival, you only revive dead people. Some of our souls are in grave danger of being dead. We're putting our hands in sin, and we're not pulling our hands away. The, sin, the symbol of your, if your soul is dead is like, imagine the stove being on fire, like hot, right? You put your hand on it, and you don't pull it away. It means your soul is in grave danger. And the Lord wants revival. If you think of the word revival, it means I'm bringing something that's dead back to life. Because if we're Catholic and we don't even believe what Catholics teach, the core teachings, especially on the Holy Eucharist, especially on the Sacrament of Confession, we have to really take a, a look and pray for more, a more deep outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Because our world is so confused. I'm just going to share a story. You're going to laugh at this, but this really happened. My niece is a, now a junior in high school, and she's a sophomore last year. There's a child who said she was a cat going to school. You've been hearing about this stuff? 
call them furries or something like that? The kid literally defecated in the classroom. What is going on in our world? How do people think that they're animals? That's actually below humans. One thing that Jesus did not come to do here was to confuse us by sending us his Holy Spirit. He wants us to know who we are in the Father's eyes. To know who, that we are truly God's beloved sons and daughters. And if you, experience, if you have experienced that, there's nothing like it. And what it gives you, gives you instead of confusion, it gives you clarity. And often why we're not receiving the love of the Father, even not even desiring it, is because we lack this. Silence. Our world is so noisy. And sometimes we distract ourselves. It's going on our phones all night long. But the word silent and the word listen are spelt with the exact same letters. If you could hear the Father say over you, you are my beloved daughter, you are my beloved son, in whom I delight, just to receive that, nothing like it. Nothing like it. And to know that and to believe that Jesus is truly here in the Holy Eucharist, it's not just a symbol. And to know in confession that your sins are truly forgiven. To know that it's not just church, it's the Mass. Where we enter into the Last Supper and that we're at Calvary. We get, to, we get to be invited as the bridegroom's bride. And the two become one when you receive Holy Communion. This is what the Holy Spirit does. It reveals the truth and helps us walk in the truth and share the truth. I'm just going to share one last thing. When I was in Anago in my last assignment, someone came up to me after Mass one time and said, Father, you didn't make me feel very good at Mass. It's not my job to make you feel good. As a priest, it's my job to make you into a saint. And sometimes the readings are hard. But that's, it's because we're all called to be higher. We're all called higher as followers of Jesus. And our bishop has been inviting each of us as priests more silence in the Mass. He said we're the, we're the, when silence is offered, the Holy Spirit shows up. So you have time to process. So you have time to receive. Because we can't keep rushing through things because we're losing souls and that happens. Hence why our bishops are calling us to have a Eucharistic revival. So we're just going to pause for a moment. What's stirring in your heart? What's the Holy Spirit just maybe picking at a little bit? Instead of fighting him, why not just open your heart to him? Just say, come on in, Holy Spirit. Reveal the truth. Because those who, who you love, you tell the truth. So we pause, just listen. We pray for you to come and fall upon us, Holy Spirit. Amen.
My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, that we may walk with him in newness of life. And now, let us renew the promises of holy baptism, which we once renounced Satan and his works, and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask each of you, do you renounce sins so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do. do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us the forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. And we now lift up our prayers to our loving and heavenly Father. That the Holy Spirit may renew the face of his holy church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the gospel may be proclaimed to the entire world through word and deed and by the example of the faithful. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Spirit may enkindle in all a fire for his love to bring aid to the suffering and comfort to the afflicted. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the Spirit may fill the hearts of his faithful gathered here today and guide us to lives of holiness and commitment. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died this past week and for those who are mourning the loss of someone dear to them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs within our prayer boxes, the needs expressed through the prayer chain, and for those held within the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, including those for the members of St. Jude Parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, please send forth the Holy Spirit upon us. Please renew in us everything so that we may always know that Jesus is truly here, especially in the Holy Eucharist. We make all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. As the gifts are being presented and the altar being set, please sing our offertory hymn number 653, O Breathe on Me, O Breath of God. That's number 653. Breathe on me, O oh breath. 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mysteries of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, 
as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of a lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be you.
body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Today's hymn for communion is number 348, Taste and See. That's number 348.
Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The monthly holy hour is this Wednesday, May 22nd at 6 o'clock p.m. in Sacred Heart Church. There will be no confessions that evening, uh, and we will be praying especially for deacons Juan Carlos and Mark, who will be ordained uh, priests in the Diocese of Green Bay on May 25th. The closing grief session, or the closing session of the grief support group will be on Thursday, May 23rd at 5.30 p.m. in the Parish Center. For anyone who wished to join the group but was unable to do so this time around, we will continue on with the grief support group starting again in September. And Father Lewis is returning back to us next week, and therefore I would like to thank Father Zach for celebrating the Masses with us for the past four weekends. It's been a lot. It has been a lot. <laughs> And there's a certain, yes. There's a certain deacon that's standing next to this priest that has the responsibility of finding coverage for Father Lewis to go to India for six weeks. So I hold my breath in anticipation because if I can't find anybody to cover, he does not get to go. So thank you again, Father Zach, for doing that. And then uh, this week, there was also another special occasion you may not have known, but Deacon Pat Gelhar celebrated his 20th anniversary to the diaconate. And at this time, we'd like him to come forward for a blessing, along with Carla. you uh, face them, I'll face you. Be good. Deacon Pat, do you want me to stand next to you? Or? <laughs> <laughs> if you all play it, pray the word, please pray the words, come Holy Spirit with me three times. Come, come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Come, come Holy Spirit. Spirit. Come, come Holy Spirit. Spirit. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for Deacon Pat and his openness to the call to diaconate which is always accompanied by the yes of his wife. Please send forth your Holy Spirit upon them, renew in them whatever is needed to build the kingdom of God on this earth. And please always help them know of our gratitude for their service to the church, and please continue to bless them as they continue to walk together as husband and wife. Please call forth more men to answer the call, the diaconate, and to the holy priesthood, so that we always have the sacraments available to us on this journey to heaven. And may Almighty God bless you both, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's give one more round of applause. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, for sure. All right, we got to keep this thing moving. Let's go. All right, okay. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. And please respond amen to the following three petitions. May God, the Father of lights, who was pleased to enlighten the disciples' minds by the outpouring of the Spirit, the paraclete, grant you gladness by his blessing and make you always abound with the gifts of the same Spirit. Amen. May the wondrous flame that appeared above all the disciples powerfully cleanse your hearts from every evil and pervade them with its purifying light. Amen. And may God, who has been pleased to unite many tongues in the profession of one faith, give you perseverance in that same faith, and by believing, may you journey from hope to clear vision. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.
The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, Michael the Archangel, Archangel defend, defend us in battle. battle. Be, be our safeguard, safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world and seek the ruin of souls. Amen. Our closing hymn for today is number 425, One Spirit, One Church. That's number 425. Like Cop car. of God, a family of believers, disciples of the Lord, united in one spirit, ignited by the fire, still burning through the ages, still present in our